Will the US dollar collapse? It's a question a lot of people are asking. A lot of videos are going viral on Instagram, TikTok. Oh my God, what would happen if the US dollar as a currency, world currency, is replaced with somebody else? Because what's going on with BRICS? You're seeing China and Russia become best friends. You're seeing a potential peace deal. Iran and Saudi Arabia, Brazil is there with Lula, with these guys. What would happen if they start buying oil through one and this is going to be bad for America. I'm telling you, this is what we have to worry about. Well, who's right? Who's wrong? We don't know. Here's what we do know. Since 1450, there's only been six different world currencies. And when you find the data, you can easily make the argument why the US dollar will be replaced. Or you can also make the argument to say, not anytime soon. Let's get right into it. Okay, so if you get value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into a couple different things. What is a world reserve currency? When you hear about this, what does this really mean? What that is, is it's the currency that is held in significant quantities by governments, institutions as a means of international payments, foreign exchange reserves and investments. So in other words, it's the most liquid capital that's available in the international market for people to use in exchange for whatever it may be. And that happens to be today, the US dollar. So you know this whole thing about currency, like what happens if the US dollar collapses and we're using a different currency? What's gonna maintain their value? Anything that's a non-duplicatable asset, such such as what? Alternative investments, right? Such as art. Because when you look at art last year, did you know last year the three auction houses had a record break in Europe? $18 billion of art sold last year. And so many companies like Goldman, Morgan, all these other companies are sitting there recommending their clients to look at alternative investments, specifically within the art space. And the one company that's disrupting this industry right now is Masterworks. And here's how they're doing it. The average person cannot go buy a Picasso, cannot go buy a Banksy or a Warhol and say, oh my God, I can't buy something like that. That's $3 million. I can't buy something like that. It's $2.8 million. But anybody can go buy a share of it. And that's what happens with Masterworks. They now have over 700,000 users that are part of Masterworks and anybody can go buy a share and it's just like stock you're buying within a company. It's all regulated. It's all through SEC. And by the way, two things you need to know about Masterworks. Every single piece of art that they sold, they provided net profits to investors. And last year alone, 2022, they paid $25 million to their investors. So if you want to participate with what Masterworks has going on, click on the link below, go get registered, learn for yourself. And if you're comfortable, start diversifying by investing in alternative assets with Masterworks. Okay, so let's take a look at the six major world currencies we've had since 1850. Believe it or not, the first one was Portugal. From 1450 to 5030, lasted 80 years. This is during the age of exploration. Portugal created a dominant global empire. Ottoman Empire closed off the traditional trade route to Asia, forced innovation through advanced in navigational technology. The Portuguese were able to reach Africa, Asia, and the New World. Portuguese currency became the primary currency used in global trade, and it established military outposts along the coast of Africa, India, Malaysia, Japan, and China. They became overextended. The empire eventually declined due to attacks and competition from other countries, mainly the Dutch, British, and the French. You would have never guessed Portugal, would you have? But they were the first. Second is Spain, which by the way, lasted the longest, 110 years from 1530 to 1640, combined forces with Portugal to form the Iberian Union. Spanish silver coins were the first global reserve currency recognized in Europe, Asia, and Americas. And this happened due to abundant silver supplies from Spanish South America. Eventually, they collapsed through wars and revolutions by the mid 1600s. Next one is Netherlands, which lasts 80 years from 1640 to 720. They had their rise to global power resulted from creation of the Dutch East India Company, first publicly traded multi-international corporation in the world founded to protect that state spice trade in the Indian Ocean and to assist in the Dutch War of Independence from Spain. The Dutch defeated Portugal and Spain economically by positioning themselves to profit from European demands for spices. France and England started their own spice trading companies and went to war with the Dutch. Saturated spice market and the costly wars destroyed the Dutch as a global currency. Next is France, which lasted 95 years from 1720 to 1815. France was best positioned to be the next reserve currency, achieve European dominance under Louis XIV, but he put France in massive debt caused by war and extravagant parties implemented heavy taxes, something we're similar with here in the States. The 1789 French Revolution was caused by an economic turmoil and public outrage. After a decade of civil war, Napoleon takes over. So this guy, Napoleon, liked a lot of wars. Obviously, we know about that, but it lasted from 1803 to 1815, conquered a lot of territory, 
eventually overextended himself and now comes a new currency. Great Britain, next one. The financial capital of the world, London, 105 years from 1815 to 1920 after Napoleon's defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, England dominates global trade for 105 years, industrial revolution combined with advanced shipbuilding capabilities to being an island nation made them the most dominant navy in the world. Dominant navy equals dominant global trade. The sun never set on Great Britain was a saying they said for decades during that time. And then eventually World War I destroyed Great Britain's economy and position as a reserve currency, took on a massive amount of debt to win the war. The US benefited massively from World War I and every country from both sides of World War I were borrowing money from the US to pay the US to build things for them. And during World War I, the US started transitioning from a under industrialized agricultural economy to the industrial manufacturing powerhouse it eventually became. So then comes the United States, which is kind of tricky because some say it started in 1920, which means the US currency has been the world currency for 103 years. But some say it happened in 45, which is only 78 years. Let me tell you why. You know, those that say it became the world currency in 1920, what it was because we had the healthiest economy in the world during the World War I that was taking place. So automatically it's like, well, we think the US dollar is going to be the currency. However, technically, the dollar did not become the official reserve currency until the post-1944 Bretton Woods Agreement. And after World War II, the U.S. basically had all the gold in the world. And because of that, countries around the world agreed to treat the U.S. dollar as an equivalent to gold. And the dollar was redeemable in gold until 1971 which kind of changed the game. And that's why a lot of people are saying, what is the dollar backed by today? At least in 1970, it was a dollar was backed by gold. But how about today? It's more risky. It's more fragile. It is a very good argument a lot of people make. The dollar has been the reserve currency now for either 102 years or 79 years, depending on how you look at the start date. So for the people that say this will never happen to the dollar, what makes the dollar so much more powerful that it'll never happen to this? They'll say, well, the infrastructure that we've spent decades building, or we have the most money circulating, or most goods are priced out by the US dollar, or the fact that we've had a lot of momentum and all these momentum year after year after year, and it's a habitual thing that we've been doing. It's like, listen, I'm just using the US dollar. It's gonna be so hard to get away from it. But as we know how innovation works, think about an app used five years ago. You're not even thinking about it today. Groupon, let's just say. You know, everybody was on Snapchat and then there was something. Everybody was using us. The change is so quick with technology. So what needs to happen for us to move on to a new currency? So you would need a currency capable of handling trillions of dollars of trade per day, several hundred thousand transactions per second, and even bigger than that, a government that others would trust. So if you're, oh, we're gonna go to one, do you trust China? Oh, we're gonna have a new world currency that everyone's gonna be using, do you trust? Or all governments coming together to use one, is the trust level high for somebody who wanna do that? By the way, one of the things that we did think about for, the, for those that say it'll never happen, it's not gonna happen during my lifetime, I'm only 28 years old, it'll happen seven years from now maybe, but not right now. Okay, what did we learn during COVID? We learned how much we relied on Taiwan for chips. We learned how much we relied on China for our pharmaceuticals. Manufacturing China. If there was anything that happened during COVID, it was a big commercial to the world to say, you rely on China, okay? And we all felt it. And they stood up tall and said, hey, you need us. You made a mistake years ago doing all this stuff for us and we were winning on the backs of US, but too late now, because you, now you need us. I was like, hey, Apple's moving away from China to go to India. Well, there's some reliability. We're leaning on China for some of this stuff. So again, whether that causes anything or not is irrelevant, but one has to be paranoid to think that there is a possibility because during COVID, we were definitely relying on China a lot. I may have just convinced you to say, well, Pat, if that's the case, we're definitely gonna go to one. Well, let's argue myself on what is the global one reserves worldwide comparable to the US dollar reserve worldwide. This is what it's looking like. So if you look at the global reserve currency, you'll see US dollar all the way at the top at around 60%. Then you have the Euro, then you got the Yen, and all the way at the bottom. Do you see what that is? Renminbi, RMB, is what the yuan is for China. It's not even close. So for that to happen, a lot would need to change. But some people say, well, Pat, the US dollar share of global central bank reserve is the lowest we've had in 30 years. We can look at that as well. And if you see this chart with a lot of the panic of where we are today, you would see that from 1979 to 1996, it was lower 
than what it is today. But if we go back and think about when we were the strongest, it's all the way back from 70 to around 78 until this president, a guy named Jimmy Carter showed up, which the closest president we've ever had to Jimmy Carter is a guy named Joe Biden. So that's another fear a lot of people are having on what's going to happen to our currency. I want to show you these two charts just for you to look at, see on what the dollar, the power of the dollar is today. If you look at this one here, it shows the share of over-the-counter foreign exchange transactions. You see the blue? That's U.S. Look what percentage of it is blue, U.S. Orange is Euro. Then you have the pound, which is green. Then the light blue is the yen. The pink is other. You see that small little yellow right there? That's the Chinese one. See how small it is? It ain't that big. Then look at this other chart. When it comes down to share of export invoicing, in Americas, it's pretty much the U.S. dollar. In Asia Pacific, it's, again, pretty much the U.S. dollar, 70-something percent of the time. A small percentage is Euro, pink is other. In Europe, they pretty much use the Euro, orange is Euro. But if you look at also the rest of the world, 80% of the time is the U.S. dollar. So the U.S. dollar, as of today, it's still the main currency that everybody uses. Closing thoughts. Henry Kissinger once said the following, who controls the food supply controls the people. Who controls the energy can control the whole continent. Who controls money can control the whole world. And you know who controls money? U.S. controls money. Now, sometimes when you have a lot of power and it's been around for a while, you become entitled. You become arrogant. You become soft. You create blind spots. You start looking at the outside as the enemies. Vanderbilt's had a lot of money. All their money, you know how long it lasted? Two generations. You know why? Because one of the sons, all he wanted to do was spend the money and party. And U.S. right now is spending money as if we have money forever. And if I, the enemy, is looking at U.S., if there's ever been an opportunity to go in there in a creative way, whether it's global CBDC, whether it's buying some U.S. politicians and leaders, whether it's dividing America internally, whether it's any of those manipulative ways to hurt America, this is a great season for it. Am I saying it can happen next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, five years, 10 years? No. But can it happen the next 10, 15, 20 years? Yes. If the U.S. gets too cocky and comfortable, somebody else can come and take our lunch. And then all of a sudden, everyone's looking around saying, what happened to the U.S.? It can happen that quickly because technology moves very quickly. Having said that, if you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I got another video I want you to watch about CBDC. If you've never seen it, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.